When moving in the fire team wedge, three movement techniques are used. Traveling, traveling overwatch, and bounding overwatch. The traveling movement technique is used when contact is not likely. The distances between personnel stays the same, but the distances between elements is approximately 20 meters. This is measured between the last man in the lead fire team, which is the grenadier, to the first man in the headquarters element, which is the squad leader. The distance between the last man in the headquarters element, which is the assistant gunner, to the first man of the trail fire team, which is the trail fire team leader, is approximately 20 meters. The traveling overwatch movement technique is used when contact is possible. The only difference between traveling and traveling overwatch is the distance from the lead fire team to the headquarters element, which is increased to 50 meters. Specifically, the distance from the last man in the lead fire team, which is the grenadier, to the first man in the headquarters element, which is the squad leader, is approximately 50 meters. The distance between the headquarters element and the trail team remains the same at 20 meters. The bounding overwatch movement technique is used when enemy contact is expected. In the bounding overwatch movement technique, the squad leader, along with the headquarters element, usually stays with the overwatch element. The bounding element, in this case the lead fire team, will not bound more than small arms range or out of sight of the overwatch element, which is normally no more than 150 meters. The distances between personnel and fire teams are based on the ability of the leader to maintain control. These distances are sometimes determined by vegetation and or terrain. The leader may reduce distances between personnel and fire teams based upon terrain and or vegetation. The squad may be traveling in terrain such as rolling hills where one fire team is in the low ground and another is cresting over the top of a hill. This situation may necessitate closing the distance between the fire teams to maintain control. Conversely, distances may be increased in open and flat terrain. Maintaining control while maximizing situational awareness is the goal. Distances between personnel and fire teams may be reduced during periods of limited visibility such as rain, snow, fog and smoke and during the hours of darkness. In order to maintain control the wedge formation may require transition to the modified wedge. The modified wedge is formed by contracting the flanks of the fire team wedge into two columns. Generally personnel are approximately three to five meters apart and will vary as to visibility and terrain. At the apex of the formation is the lead fire team leader. As in the wedge, he is responsible for frontal security, en route, route selection, and land navigation. To the lead fire team leader's right is the rifleman compass man. To the rifleman compass man's left is the automatic rifleman. To the automatic rifleman's right is the grenadier. To the lead fire team grenadier's left is the squad leader. To the squad leader's right is the RTO. To the RTO's left is the machine gunner. To the machine gunner's right is the assistant gunner. To the assistant gunner's left is the trail fire team's rifleman. To the trail fire team rifleman's right is the automatic rifleman. To the automatic rifleman's left is the trail fire team leader. The trail fire team leader is responsible for rear security and assisting the squad leader in maintaining accountability and command and control. To the trail fire team leader's right is the grenadier. As in the wedge, the positions of the squad leader and the trail team leader are flexible and fixed for the lead team leader. The squad leader uses METTC to determine location of the machine gun. While moving during the hours of good visibility in the fire team wedge, the lead fire team leader may find it necessary to call a halt. If so, he will give the hand and arm signal to
to halt his fire team. The hand and arm signal to halt is given by using the non-firing hand with the fingers extended and joined, palm facing forward, arm bent at a 90 degree angle, upper arm parallel to the ground. The lead fire team leader moves to the next available position that provides cover and concealment if available and assumes a good short halt posture. A short halt posture is taking a knee behind cover and concealment with your rucksack on your back, your weapon at the ready, pulling security in your assigned sector of fire. The lead fire team leader ensures that the rest of his fire team does the same. When halted, the lead fire team is responsible for security from the 9 o'clock through the 12 o'clock to the 3 o'clock position. The squad leader continues to close the distance between the headquarters element and the lead fire team to a position where the trail fire team will be able to achieve interlocking sectors of fire to approximately 35 meters out or hand grenade range with the lead fire team. The squad leader then gives the hand and arm signal to halt, assumes a good short halt posture and ensures that the rest of his element does the same. The trail fire team leader continues moving his team forward until he has achieved interlocking sectors of fire with the lead fire team. The trail fire team leader then issues the hand and arm signal to halt, assumes a good short halt posture and ensures that the rest of his fire team does the same. The trail fire team is responsible for security from the 3 o'clock through the 6 o'clock to the 9 o'clock. The trail fire team leader ensures that his grenadier is pulling rear security from the 4 o'clock to the 8 o'clock. The squad leader must decide where to place the machine gun team based on MET-TC analysis, the enemy's most likely avenue of approach, and the enemy's most probable course of action. In this instance, since the lead fire team leader called the halt, the squad leader will most likely leave the machine gun team at the 9 o'clock until he determines why the lead fire team leader called the halt. Again, since the lead fire team leader called the halt, the squad leader will move up to the lead team leader's location to find out why he has called the halt. En route, the squad leader spot checks the lead fire team to ensure that they are in the proper short halt posture. Simultaneously, the trail fire team leader moves forward to the squad leader's last known location spot checking the headquarters personnel as he moves forward. Once at the squad leader's last known location, he will wait for further guidance on a knee inside the perimeter. If the squad leader desired to move out at this time, he would give the team leader's task, conditions, and standards to get their men prepared to move. If the squad leader wants to call a halt, he sends a signal to halt either by hand and arm signal or by radio to the lead fire team leader. Once the lead fire team leader receives the command to halt, he finds a suitable location as previously described. The squad leader can use a hand and arm signal or the radio to initiate stop, look, listen, and smell or SILS. Stop. All movement ceases. Look. All squad members look for signs of the enemy such as trash, old fighting positions, expended brass, or the enemy themselves. Listen. Listen for signs of the enemy, such as engines running, the enemy talking, or the enemy moving. Smell. Smell for signs of the enemy, such as food, smoke from fires, or POL products. Sills will last for three to five minutes or for as long as the squad leader deems necessary. Because the squad leader called the halt, the team leaders move to his location to receive instructions. The lead fire team leader will have the rifleman compass man assume the frontal security from the 10 o'clock to the 2 o'clock. He will also spot check his fire team to ensure that they are in a good short halt posture as he works his way to the squad leader's location. At the same time, the trail fire team leader will ensure that the last man in his team is pulling rear security from the 4 o'clock to the 8 o'clock. He will also spot check his team to ensure that they are in a good short halt posture. While en route to the squad leader's location, he will also check the headquarters element to ensure that they are in a good short halt posture. Once the team leaders reach the squad leader's location, the squad leader will brief them on the reason for the halt, such as to crossload heavy equipment, conduct a water break, conduct a map check, a security halt, 
or for whatever reason he deems necessary.